Jesus, master of everything, comes our every storm. Dear friends, on this 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, Yabi, we pray and reflect on how our Lord and Master of everything on earth and in heaven calms down every storm in our lives. Dear friends, storms, difficulties, challenges are part of human life, just as our joys, beautiful moments are also part of our life. There is no life without a storm. But not all life is full of only storms. There are also many positive, good, beautiful moments around us to appreciate and to thank God for. Surely, there are storms. But unfortunately, we sometimes live our lives every day as if all life is full of only storms, as if all life is full of only negatives and the only difficulties. No, dear friends, sometimes we meet only one storm in life and at once we forget about the remaining 99 blessings and good things in us and around us. Imagine the one difficult storm we meet blocks us from enjoying the 99 good positive things and great opportunities that life offers us every moment, even now. Instead of sparing our energies to build and construct and encourage what is good and positive in us and around us, we instead use our energy to exaggerate our few storms. The, to exaggerate, we use our energy to drain ourselves more. Sometimes the storms are there, yes, but they are small and we exaggerate them and make them big as if the whole world is finishing. Dear friends, focusing only on storms and negativity destroys us and destroys others around us. All in all, there is a sufficient reason for every storm. The storm can become a blessing. There is a sufficient reason for every storm that we encounter in life or for everything good that happens around us or everything that is not good that happens in our lives. There is a sufficient reason. And these storms can turn into blessings. Time heals everything. Time will tell us why things happen the way they happen, why the storms came our way. Time will tell us. In everything, dear friends, that happens to us, we just have to be patient, to hold ourselves and pause a bit, to reflect and thank God, but also thank others. We, in everything that happens to us, we just have to evaluate what is positive and negative about what happened? What did we learn from what happened? What good thing did we learn from what happened? And what negative thing did we learn so that we, so that we learn from the strength that we, from what has happened, but also from the weaknesses, from our limitations. We learn also from our limitations. In everything that happens to us, we ask, we have to, we have to cry out and pray, telling God everything also sharing with others whom we trust in everything that happens to us. We just have to tell God everything, to cry to God and also tell to others in everything that happens to us. We just have to surrender to God everything that is in our hands, but also everything that is out of our hands and let God, let God the master and the creator of everything bless us and transform everything that we have offered to him for our good. He transform everything into blessing for our good and also the good of others. In today's first reading of Job chapter 38, we hear of God's response to Job's complaints about the many and almost unending storms of problems in Job's life. We are aware, dear friends, of how Job was a faithful, good man, and yet he encountered many storms. He encountered many problems and calamities, losing everything, including his health and his own family. After and after much endurance amidst all these problems and calamities, Job decided to confront God. I want to meet God. He decided to confront God for an answer for his problems. Dear friends, when we go through problems and storms in life, which are part of life, do we confront God for God our Father openly talking to him in prayer without 
hiding anything? Do we talk to God seeking for an answer to what we don't understand? Seeking for an answer to our problems and to the things we that we do not understand immediately? Or we hide everything in ourselves, pretending to solve them only on our own limited human level? <laughs> How much? strength do we have we have to entrust everything to god and trust god but entrust everything to god job teaches us to talk to god of the things that god already knows and to seek for an answer from god job teaches us to seek an answer from god which answer is also found in the conscience uh, and the source of the answer of god is found in the silence of our hearts the answer of to seek and, and the, the answer from God, which is also in the events. The answer God speaks to us in the events, in the things, and in the persons around us. God responds to us through the events, through the persons around us, and especially God's answer to us that is often found in His own word of God. Dear friends, God speaks to us and answers to us from His own word that our God uses to speak or to respond to us. And that we use the same word at the same time. We use the same word of God to speak or reply back to God. So the same word of God, we use it to speak to God with using the same words of God. But at the same time, we get the answers from God using the same word of God. So today, God took time to respond to Job. Certainly not as Job would have loved to have it. But God rather posed the questions to Job. These questions as seen in today's reading indicate the mighty powerfulness and greatness of God over all his creatures. Of course, the world and all it contains, including the wind and the seas, are the works of God's hands and are subject. The world is subject. Everything is subject to God's command, God's power. A God who has power to command or to make something from nothing. Thing. A God who has power to heal or transform whatever seems impossible to us, to turning it from impossible to possible. What is it, dear friends, that seems impossible for you, my brother, my sister, my friend, now? God is here tonight to repair and our broken pieces in life and to transform everything, to put everything together, to harmonize in to transform everything, including our storms, our health, our lives. God is here to transform everything because he's powerful for our good. Job finally realizes that God is God. <laughs> God Job realizes that God is God who does everything and knows what he's doing. That our God knows what he's doing and he does everything as he wishes. And so Job realizes that God is God. And that job is job. And that job understands that job understands just a, a very little of everything, just as a human being who is limited. We too can mistakenly think that we know what is best in any situation. We may think and pretend and mistakenly think that we are right and we know everything and others are wrong. So we end up not even praying, not even asking advice, and we don't even ask God or others to give us wisdom. We don't ask God to give us wisdom. We don't ask God to give us understanding, strength, and power because we think we have all the powers. Oh, our power ends here. Yet when we, we are with God, we are we have everything. We need to be humble. We need to know our place as human beings. We need to know that we are nothing without God and that we are everything when we are with God, especially when we listen to his word, which is spirit and life, which tells us exactly what to do in every situation, even in the storms and also the joyful moments. You also need to repent as Job did at the end of the book of Job. God always delivers uh, and God delivers, liberates. He saves or frees those who are humble. Not those who are proud. He frees those who are humble and those who, and those who put their trust in him. Even when God may seem to be silent, as he was with Job, he's working out everything for our good. Let us continue downloading and casting our joys, but also our burdens and sorrows and everything unto God, our Father, who, for he cares for us, his children. As we renew our trust, our faith in the Lord in this day today, may our faith never fail. Lord, we believe in you. Increase our little faith, especially when storms, problems come our way and we don't know what to do and how to do it. Increase our little faith. May you, Lord, calm down every storm in our lives and grant us the joy of living as your children, even amidst the storms and challenges. In today's Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, we see Jesus in a boat, Jesus in a world, 
<laughs> of his people. We see him in a boat. It could not have been a very large boat and the storms would have been tossing that small boat all around the sea. Imagine just about to turn and Jesus is sleeping. <laughs> How many times have we experienced storms or problems in our lives? Maybe even right now and thought that the Lord was asleep that God was not concerned, that God was simply ignoring us and is not hearing us. The gospel today lets us know that God is always aware of what is happening in our lives, even when he seems asleep, even when he seems silent and unconcerned and uncaring. God is always aware of what is happening. Let us allow him to do whatever he wishes. The gospel invites us to a deep level of trust or faith in our God, to trust God, to let him act. God loves us and cares for us always and will not let us, whom he created in his image and likeness, perish. He will not let us perish. And if we, if, even if we die, which we shall do every one day, we die in him because we have always held on ourselves to him. God sees and knows everything in us and around us because he is powerful creator of the universe. Nothing escapes his eyes. Still in today's gospel, Jesus exercised this power of God to put everything under control. He, he, Jesus comes down, he put back everything in order by rebuking the wind, the strong wind and the storm, and commanding the sea to be still, to be calm. Like he did in the past, Jesus is here today, tonight, and right now to calm down our agitations, our storms, our fears, and whatever is boiling in us. Jesus is saying us, calm down, my dear children. Jesus exercised this power to calm down the storm because he is God, indicating that he has come down into the world to calm the storms of our lives and bring about peace. Jesus came to bring about peace in our troubled situation. And to, he invites us also to share this peace, this freedom, this liberty, this love to others. Like Job in the first reading, the disciples in the gospel too began to panic as, uh, as we too sometimes usually panic when we encounter problems. They cry out in fear, Master, do you not care? We are going down. We are sinking. We are drowning. Surely God cares for us and will always care. All we need to do, as Jesus pointed out, is to trust and have faith in the power of God to save us. Trusting that, that, that no matter what we go through, we are victorious with Jesus who overcame every storm, everything. When everything seemed to be finished, Jesus overcame everything with his resurrection. We are victorious. We are trusting that no matter what we go through, we are victorious. We are victorious when we hold on to the Lord, working out everything with him and never working out everything alone and never walking also alone. Lord, we believe in you. Increase our faith. Perhaps some of us find it hard to understand why Jesus would rebuke the poor disciples trying to wake him up, to help him up for the help as their boat is sinking. And true disciples supposed to run to their master in their moment of need? Isn't it a sign that they have, of their faith and trust in him that they call on him in their moment of crisis? Did Jesus... Himself not say in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28, Come to me all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and loads and I will give you rest. Why then does he reprimand the weary disciples who are simply overwhelmed in the face of the storm and fear? Mark's early Christian community was persecuted. It was frightened community, a community where many were required to die because they associated themselves with Jesus. Mark's church was like a boat sailing dangerously through the stormy seas because persecution was there, in danger of being drowned with the waves and crisis. It was dangerous to be a Christian at that moment in the early Christian community. Yet even though Jesus had promised to be with his church, Jesus was not intervening as they wanted. He was not intervening to the end of the crisis. How did the early Christians react to this crisis that threatened to drown them with the storm? When Jesus seemed to be sleeping or silent, they, res they resorted to prayer. A sort of prayer of protest to Jesus who looks on and does nothing while his people are dying. They resorted to prayer. Prayer was their means of waking Jesus up. The way the story ends with Jesus getting up and calming the rough sea in Mark's way, is Mark's way of saying to the church under persecution, under crisis and problem, is also Mark's way of saying to us that Jesus will always hear our prayers. 
Eh, because Jesus, afterwards, he wakes up and he comes the storm. So it's a, an assurance that Jesus will always hear our prayers. He will always end our crisis and restore peace to you and me. It is normal that when we are caught in the storms that threaten our existence and that that of our church, we are to take these storms to the Lord in prayer. Whatever we receive in life, we have to take it to God in prayer. Good things and bad things, we take them to God in prayer. Do we trust or do we trust our powerful God and take our joys, our sorrows, our storms, our fears, our worries, our crises, our challenges, our plans, and our lives to the Lord in prayer? God bless you, dear friends, and may God heal us. Amen.